the Vox Markets podcast with Justin Waite. Nothing in this podcast is intended as investment advice and the people in this podcast may hold positions in the stocks they talk about. Do not buy anything based solely on a tip or recommendation. Please do your own research. Welcome to the podcast on Thursday, the 20th of May, 2021. On the podcast day, Bill Brody Good, CEO and Technical Director of Alien Metals, gives an overview of their final results and discusses why they are likely to increase their interest in Hammersley Iron Ore Project to 90%. Also on the podcast, Jay Cheatham, CEO and Bob Rosenthal, Technical Director of Pantheon Resources, talk about the resource upgrade on its basin floor fan complex, which spans both Theta West Project and Talitha Unit. Plus, John Mayer, mining analyst and partner at SP Angel, discusses uh, Bitcoin Gold, Blue Jay Mining, Alba Mineral Resources and Eurasia Mining. Plus, at the end of the podcast, I have two lists for you, the top five most followed companies on Vox Markets in the last 24 hours, and the top five most read RNSs. By the way, you can see both these lists at voxmarkets.co.uk, where you'll see lots of content worth reading. Uh, Canaboo Group jumps as it signs agreement with Pure Origin. There's one there on Source Bio, International Wins Tender with uh, what's it, Public Health England and UK Government Approval. A Traders Cafe with Zach Mir, Bulletin Board Heroes. Um, what's he covering there today? He's coming to Scapen, Guild, Iconic Labs, Kenobo, Net Scientific, N4 Pharma, uh, Turn, Zephyr Energy, Zoetic, plenty of companies. And of course, on the front page there, our COVID-19 index. Uh, biggest riser there today is N4 Pharma up 8.2% to 8.55 pence. Biggest faller, E Therapeutics down 5.7% to 24.5 pence. Check that out at voxmarkets.co.uk. Vox Markets is an online community of investors that runs a free mobile and desktop platform that allows you to track news and updates about any UK-listed company, offering RNS push notifications, detailed charts, pricing data, and much more. Find out more at voxmarkets.co.uk forward slash app. And joining me on the podcast right now is Bill Brodygood, CEO and tech Technical Director of Alien Metals, UFO, is the ticker there. Bill, thanks for joining me. Justin, nice to nice to catch up again. Yeah, well, you've got two bits of news up today. You've, you've, uh, you're increasing your interest in the Hamsley Iron Ore uh, project to 90%. We'll discuss that in a bit and why. And also financial results for the year ended the 31st December 2020. Of course, we're just saying then, we're almost six months <laughs> past that now. It's crazy how time is flying. So, uh, But we'll dig into some of the highlights of that, if you could. Um, but before we do, Bill, for people not familiar, maybe just give us a brief summary as to what you're all about in Alien Metals. Okay, so um, we are um, um, you know, in the resource space, um, a sort of junior explorer, project developer. Um, we currently have um, projects in Mexico. Uh, we're focused on silver and copper um, and a couple of excellent projects in um, Australia. Um, one, one area we just, you just mentioned and we'll talk about the, the iron ore um, and the other one being um, silver, copper, nickel, platinum, group element, sort of a whole, a whole um, collection of commodities on our Elizabeth Hill um, silver project, um, both in the Pilbara. Mm-hmm. Yeah, marvellous stuff. Cool. And uh, let's uh, discuss some, some highlights, if you could, from the financial results. So just looking down there, and of course, you know, then sort of pre-revenue and you're in that area over there. Uh, I thought the most important point, I suppose, is, apart from having good projects, is cash. And you, you're good for cash, well, it looks like. Yeah, I mean, um, I think we're, we're you know, um, it's great to have these this done. Um, it's always important to um, to sort of um, review uh, how the year was. And I think we're very, very pleased with the outcome. I mean, our total assets as of 31st December 2020 was um, 9.4 million, up from 0.7. So, um, you know, significant increase. And of that, you know, at the end of last year, the last day of um, 2020, we had um, uh, 5.6 million uh, in cash in US dollars, uh, 5.6 million US dollars, sorry, cash, um, which is very significant, I think, for um, for what we, you know, what we're about and what we've been doing, and and this has enabled us to um, this year so far um, advance um, some of the projects. Um, you know, even in this this still this difficult time with with the pandemic, um, specifically uh, um, the um, 
the iron ore. I mean, that's sort of um, we've been fortunate to be able to push ahead with that. Um, yeah, well, yeah, t- tell us, well, t- well, conditional agreement here for you to increase your interest in Hamsley uh, iron ore project ninety percent. So, first of all, uh, give us a, an overview of that project and where you are with it, uh, and then we'll and then explain why you've obviously up to or potentially sure. up to interest. Well, well, well the project. Um, it's composed of two um, two tenements, um, the Hancock and the Brockman, both in the um, in the Pilbara, in uh, sort of the heart of uh, globally, the heart of iron ore country. Um, both incredibly underexplored. Uh, we were very fortunate to um, initially get a 51% holding. Um, we did some early work, um, groundwork, uh, mapping, some sampling. Um, we had. We managed to get the the POW permission for of works for um, for drilling on the Hancock project um, uh, at the end of last year. So we did a maiden drilling program beginning of this year. Um, again, essentially the first drilling ever done on on the project, um, other than the, the few holes Volta did um, it's sort of eight eight nine years ago in the uh, on the Sirius extension. Um, and we got some excellent. Um, Initial results, so we're still waiting on the final final few holes to be able to compile everything. But um, uh, early results are excellent. Um, some new discoveries in terms of high-grade material um, on this series of, of beds, which are, which are, are represented as, as ridges um, and that have really, we are just now really starting to understand their, their potential and their extent. Um, and we're working. We're working hard in the background on the. Um, let's not forget the Brockman project, which has historic BHP deposits, 1920, um, and also um, just we're just north of what was defined as BHP 15 prospect. Um, we are working on the paperwork and the necessary uh, permissions to um, to do a maiden drilling there, which um, we're hoping, you know, um, Q3 will be be fantastic to uh, to achieve that. So, going you know going really well, and and I think we're um, the results and the and the the expectations and and the the potential we feel of these projects is um is increasing really um as as we do more work on them. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And uh, like I said iron ore. What's your thoughts there? Well, iron ore. I mean, I've you know I've worked in iron ore many years. Um, it's a staple commodity, of course. Um, it has, um, you know, more recently, um, as, as I'm sure most people are aware, it's an um, incredible price. I mean, it, it crept up to nearly $230 a tonne for the direct shipping, you know, the high-grade material, um, which I should say is what we're, we're focusing on at Hancock. And we have, um, you know, we've got a couple of excellent intercepts already um, in new areas, including like 13 meters at 61 and a half percent um which is definitely dso material um it's it's great i mean uh, you know the world is is in demand now for these sort of materials again to really ramp up and get back on track um we're in a region and we have projects we believe um can help provide that that demand um so yeah it's it's very positive and i think um by now being in this position where we can um, we can have a 90 percent um, stake in, in in the project in in the Hammers, what we call the Hammersley project that really gives us the the ability and the flexibility to um, to just push on um, you know quite aggressively with um, with the, with the work but also with with you know the next stage of planning talking to possible partners whatever it might be yeah, yeah, marvellous stuff. Okay, um, well, let's summarise that, Bill, and the potential in three easy points, if you could. If someone's listening right now, let's understand what you're doing, but are not yet following the story. Three bullet points as to why they should hit that follow button on your page on Fox and add alien metals to their watch list, please. Um, I think, as we've just spoke about, um, you know, the iron ore project on its own in, in Western Australia is, um, is looking increasingly interesting um, with the market, you know, with the iron ore market as well. Um, so I think we're in you know excellent space for um, for for developing something there. Um, Elizabeth Hill again is a silver, nickel, platinum group element um, project. Uh, we're just just getting you know getting feet on the ground there now as well. Um, 
and again with silver in Mexico um, and copper in Mexico, you know we have again a great suite of commodities. And I, I you know, I still have a lot of faith in the projects with their with potential. Um, and I think again, you know, the people in in Alien, um, you've got some great people. Um, we're all focused on on achieving um, technically a success um, to to advance projects and really. Um, move them up the, up the up the curve, and um, you know, but spending that money we're 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 raising on the ground in the ground uh, as much as possible. Yeah, yeah, marvelous stuff, Bill. Good to chat to you as always, and uh, hopefully we'll catch up in the not too distant future. Thank you very much, Justin. Thanks again. Look forward to it. The Vox Markets Podcast with Justin Waite. And joining me on the podcast right now is Jay Cheatham, CEO, and Bob Rosenthal, Technical Director of Pantheon Resources. P-A-N-R is a ticker there. Guys, thanks for joining me. Oh, good. It's great to be with you, Justin, again. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We spoke a couple of years back, actually, so it was nice to catch up and see where we're at. And uh, you've just released some news on a resource upgrade, and we'll talk about that in a bit. Before we do, uh, Jay and Bob, for people maybe not familiar with the company, could you give us a, a brief summary as to what Pantheon's all about, please? Yeah, Pantheon is an, an exploration and production company with 100% of our assets on the north slope of Alaska. We have 160,000 acres, 100% working interest, and we have huge resources on, on, on that acreage. Excellent stuff. Okay, well, let's get into it. Uh, like I said, you recently announced a resource upgrade. Can you tell us a bit more about the project and the relationship between uh, Talitha and Talitha West, please? Yes, well, we announced that we have a P50 estimate of 12.1 billion barrels of oil in place and 1.41 billion barrels of oil recoverable in the basin floor fan complex that we now call Theta West. And the reason we call it Theta West is part of part of it is on our Talitha unit, but the majority of it extends west and northwest off of our Talitha unit into what we now call our Theta West complex. Understood. And we believe that these estimates are categorized as contingent resource. Wow, that's some big numbers there. So just to, for people not aware or familiar, just tell us the significance of these results, if you could, uh, Jay. Well, 1.4 billion barrels is, is, is huge anywhere in the world. Offshore West Africa, offshore deep water Gulf of Mexico, anywhere in the world, a billion barrels of recoverable oil puts you, you know, in, in the top oil fields in the world. Yeah, absolutely. Marvelous stuff. Okay. Uh, you now, you've hinted that Pantheon's Theta West project has a lot of potential. How does this discovery feed into the company's future drilling plans, Jay or Bob? Well, you know... We announced that we we actually made our discovery. We were 1,500 feet down dip from the crest of the structure. That's quite remarkable. And when I say 1,500 feet down dip from the crest, we're actually 10 miles away. So we're structurally 1,500 feet down dip from the crest of the structure mm. and 10 miles away from the crest. This is an enormous feature. But when we actually drill the crestal lake location, we're going to find thicker reservoir, we're going to find shallower reservoir, and uh, sorry, we're going to find thicker reservoir, and we're going to find like better porosity and por permeability because mm -hmm. the reservoir is shallower. We're, we want to drill that well next winter. We want to test the, the rest of the Talitha A uh, zones. And we want to start and, and drill uh, an appraisal well on our discovery, which is called Alcade. So we have a lot of activity that we want to do. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, how do these results compare to other oil fills in the North Slope there? Well, I, we believe that the entire complex will ultimately be the second largest on the North Slope. We've, we've announced 12.1 billion barrels in just one zone. If you add the other zones, the shelf margin deltaic, the slope fan system, uh, we had a zone that we we penetrated in the Talitha well that, that we were not uh, expecting. 
and we have the Kapark. When you add all of those, we have probably close to 2 billion barrels of oil recoverable and something on the order of 15 or more billion barrels of oil in place. That puts us as, as larger than the Kapark oil field and only second to Prudhoe Bay. And, and good big oil fields get bigger over time. Originally, Prudhoe Bay was estimated to have 10 billion barrels of oil in place and 3 billion barrels recoverable. It's now going to recover more than 15 billion barrels of oil or more than the original estimate of the oil in place. And I believe that our resources, reserves, et cetera, at Theta West and the rest of our complex have the ability to grow, maybe not to the same extent as Prudhoe Bay, but certainly grow. Yeah, wow. Okay, so looking forward, what uh, other news, any bits of news coming up, can, should we know about, should investors look out for, Jay, Bob? Well, we've got, we've got multiple zones with hydrocarbons in it, and each one of those zones are, are going to be analyzed, assessed, and we're going to come up with a resource uh, on several of them. We're going to be good, coming up with a resource upgrade from what we've announced in the past, and we'll be also announcing the resource uh, potential on a number of zones, which we hadn't even discussed in the past. So a lot of news flow. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, guys, uh, every day on the podcast, I highlight the top five most followed companies on Vox Market. To get on that list, of course, people have to hit that follow button. So uh, give us three quick reasons now why someone should hit that follow button and add Pantin resources to their watch list, please. Well, I'll, I'll throw out my, my, my reasons. And first of all, we are significantly undervalued. And why are we undervalued? It's because we have found billions of barrels of oil because we found billions of barrels of oil and because we found billions of barrels of oil. Yeah, there's plenty. <laughs> that's, uh, that's more than three reasons. There's billions of reasons, I yeah. suppose. So uh, excellent stuff. Guys, it's good to chat to you, and uh, hopefully we'll catch up in the not-too-distant future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Justin. It's great being with you again. Bye-bye. The Vox Markets Podcast with Justin Waits. And joining me on the podcast right now is John Mayer, mining analyst and partner at SP Angel. You all right, John? Yes, good. Thank you. Back in the office? Yeah, back in the office. Yep. Did, you go, did you go out last night for a few? I uh, had a well, couple tonight. of night before okay. with with one of our clients. So yeah. to any 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 mining company people who are around, please please come and see us and and come over for a drinky poo. Well, I'm sure plenty, many people will come over for a drinky poo and they'll pretend they're mining people. <laughs> so I own <laughs> I own a few stocks. <laughs> uh, so the thing that I find of this because uh, the weather this week has been dreadful and even the economy's open, I feel like it's, it's almost a, a natural slow opening. I don't know what it's like in London. I know London's quite buzzing in the centre there. And Soho, but I feel like people haven't really rushed out, and I think that maybe this weekend people will start to get out there and experience the pub a bit more. What do you reckon? No, you're absolutely right. I've noticed that after the initial Measure. rush early in the evening, mm. uh, the restaurants and bars have been relatively quiet. I've been yeah. quite surprised. The weather's dreadful, is it? Literally, it's gone from the sun. I've, I've gone up walking the dog, and it's been really quite hot and, and warm, so I have a t shirt on. And I come back drenched and it's cold and wet. And I've only gone for 15 minutes. And so that's the weather. So I think it's put a bit of a damper, a bit of, you know, put the mockers on this uh, opening up thing. So, but I think we'll slowly ease into it. Now with the, 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 the scary into the Indian coronavirus, have you noticed how quiet it's going on that now? Because they revealed yesterday uh, less than 3,000 people have got it. And, uh, you know, at the height of the pandemic, we're getting 60,000 cases a day. So literally, all the newspapers went crazy on it. Most of the people in this country now, uh, 75% of adults now, are now vaccinated. So it's not posing a huge, huge problem. Um, but, but I think one of those exciting things this week, John, I don't know if you're involved in this, but Bitcoin, I've been looking at this for a while. Every week I have Glenn Goodman, who's a, he's written a book called The Crypto Trader, on the podcast. And we were looking at the charts. It's due, it's due to fall over. It's due to, you know, have, have a sell-off. And, and then Elon Musk said then, all of a sudden, about climate change, that they, he's not going to bother um, accepting yeah. Bitcoin for Tesla and all that stuff. And that sort of speeded up the sell-off. And then China jumped on board. Uh, did you see what China was saying there? It's, it's illegal. I'll mine it and all that stuff. And uh, so, yeah, all things have gone wrong for crypto, but it's bounced back a bit today. Did you see any of that? I mean, I don't know if it's uh, helped gold in any way. Look, I, I think this was inevitable. 
governments control currencies and to have a currency out there uh, that is that is not in any form of government control is, is unacceptable, particularly unacceptable to communist states that like to control everything. Um, but also unacceptable, I think, to Western nations that need to need to regulate their economies, you know, need to regulate excess growth, need to, to regulate uh, so that you create growth when you need it. And if you've got everybody starting to trade something that looks be- is beginning to look like another currency, um, which 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 has a sort of dark element to it as well, then then you've got a problem. So it's, I'm not surprised that China is the first one to come out and say, "Sorry, guys, trading of this is illegal." And I and I would expect other other nations to follow suit. Now remember that gold also trades like a currency, but then gold's been around. People have been trading gold since time immemorial so gold is gold is there you can't change that so gold does operate kind of outside the regulatory system but there always is some sort of uh some 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 sort of um there are mechanisms shall we say where governments can uh, probably influence gold if if they need to i mean for example central banks are based on gold stocks mm. yeah but also gold like, is it, like you say there was an industry a bartering system that uh, or a trading system that happened with gold before money came around and then money sort of replaced gold so and then all of a sudden like I said the governments got involved in the financial st- systems and set up, set up their own central banks and so it's based on, on gold pretty much wasn't it so and, and then Bitcoin comes along undermining that you know that uh, the, the conformists and the, the, the establishments and so obviously the establishments don't like that they go, hang on a sec you can't just create your own money that's what we're in charge of and so yeah but I, I, you know it's an odd thing here the rolling over has has gold rallied at all I don't look at the price um Oh, so gold, yes, gold, gold prices are coming up. Mm. Um, I think it's natural that as Bitcoin goes down, gold will will lift a bit. There's also other other supporting forces there. We've got some more inflation in the system, certainly, but we've also got noises from central banks indicating that that interest rates will stay lower for longer, and we've got a slightly weaker U.S. dollar. So all those things are good for gold. Now, my my feeling now is that gold is is going to break through $2,000 an ounce fairly convincingly. I don't know if we'll get up to $2,500 an ounce, but we're certainly heading in that direction, in my view. Yeah, yeah. I think, I mean, the only thing about, you know, Bitcoin, it's got to change. And it sort of is, I think, now. I think, I mean, because, you know, it's been found that most of the miners are based in China and they're probably using sort of coal-fired power stations. And, of course, that's dirty. That's why Elon Musk said, which is odd that he's come up with this statement now. I think it's to do with carbon credits and stuff uh, for Tesla. Uh, but he said he can't deal in bitcoins anymore because of the climate problem. Uh, but it's going to force people. When there's lots of money involved... It'll force people to innovate and use alternatives. And uh, so I don't think this is the end. Of, but if, if it's climate versus Bitcoin, Bitcoin will lose. But I think it'll adapt to become more clean, you know? Well, the economic footprint of creating more Bitcoin now is horrendous. It wasn't so bad when it first started, but it, it's because it's a, there's so much computing power required. Uh, the latest statistic is that Bitcoin miners use about 50% of the total UK power generation, which when you think about it is pretty ridiculous. If, yeah. if, 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 if you print print dollar bills, for example, the economic foot, the carbon footprint of that is is minute. Well, do you know um, what? I saw Tim, Tim Draper, he's a very well-known guy, he's a Bitcoin enthusiast, but he did a, a, a graph, in fact, I'll find it, right? And, he, and he's been trying to defend Bitcoin, the power usage. And I thought he basically... Um, it won the argument for the opposition with his post on 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 LinkedIn. I'm trying to find it. So the graphic of the terawatts used uh, for Bitcoin versus like um, you know m- uh, a traditional banking system. And I thought, hang on a sec. So oh, here we go. Here we go. So I don't know what this is. A bar chart, and there's three bars basically. There's banking system, there's gold, and there's Bitcoin. And there's estimated annual energy consumption terawatts. Uh, an hour per year or something. So uh, the banking system shows 250. This is terawatts. Um, the gold shows just below that 225. And then Bitcoin's at a hun- over 100. And I thought, are you kidding? Are you comparing Bitcoin to the banking system? We all need the banking system. You know, if we're without the banking system, the whole world would implode. We don't need Bitcoin at the moment. It's mainly a trading asset. So it surprised me how much energy Bitcoin used compared to the banking system. So in my mind, he's defeated his own argument, you know? 
Uh, absolutely. And and the other thing about Tesla and Bitcoin is if if they've been taking in a lot of Bitcoin, with that they have they they'll have to mark to market. Uh, the value of those investments. So if they haven't been able to pass those those bitcoins on and change them into into hard currency, uh, then they could be looking at very large write offs um, on on those holdings. So I, I suspect Elon Musk has been converting them into cash as fast as he can. But mm. who knows? I it's still I don't know how they manage their their finances internally. Yeah. Um, and, someone you know, did you say, want to think yeah. Of, Sorry, someone did say that the reason why, if you look at his tweets, they're generally emojis and one words or silly couple of lines. And then that, that one about Bitcoin was a statement, a screenshot a statement, almost was supplied by somebody else. And someone did say, if you look into it, it's because Tesla gets carbon credits and they can't get it. I don't know if it's true. They can't get carbon credits if they're dealing in Bitcoin because Bitcoin is not carbon friendly or neutral friendly. So I don't know if that's true, but it sort of makes sense, doesn't it, really? Yeah. Well, it, it would make a certain amount of sense, and it would also make sense from a regulatory perspective. If if you think if you, the government wants to stop people from really using Bitcoin and want to sort of restrict the way it works, mm -hmm. then using the carbon credit system to to do that to stop people from from using it to trade is is a way of regulating the market and, and slowing down its growth. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, let's look at stocks if you could. And I've had a request for. You to cover Blue Jay mining. Uh, have you got anything on that, John? Well, the Blue Jay is very interesting, and I, I bought some shares for myself a little while ago. Um, and I and I I was concerned because my valuation seemed a bit higher than the company's. And if you look at the last presentation they've done, and I and so I went through and I double checked all the assumptions, all the numbers in my modelling. And when I put in their assumptions, uh, I came up with this rough, approximately the right sort of number. I mean, we have varying views on various assumptions for the the, the, the big Ilmanite project in Greenland. Mm. Um, and then I then I looked and I thought, well, what's, what's the difference here? Why is my valuation so much higher than, than what the company are putting out? I thought, well, the company are just being much too cautious about this. Ilmanite prices have carried on going up. In fact, in China, Ilmanite prices are nearly $100 a tonne, more than we see in the rest of the world at the moment. Yeah. Now, there, there'll be some local reasons for that. But we know that they are selling into an Asian trading group. They've got a, an off-take agreement for 70% of their pro product. And I looked again at the capital costs, and actually in my model I added 20% on top of the capital cost, just in case there were going to be any cost overruns. And I talked to the management in more detail about this, and they've been optimizing the process. And you know, normally when a mining company optimizes the mining process, they manage to save a few quid here and there. And in fact, that sounds like, like like it's true. They've been working on some clever, uh, just you know, some innovative type ideas. Nothing particularly new in the mining industry, but just better ways of doing things, which will save them operating costs, will save them capital costs. They're also looking at installing a lot lot more renewable energy, um, which will be fantastic because you don't want, you know, you want to cut down your, your power costs. You want to cut down the amount of, of fuel you're, you're bringing into the site. Um, so, the, I mean, what would I, I've, I've asked them to, to tell the market more about about the sort of the engineering details that they're working on because I, I, I think this is, well, one, I find it very interesting. And two, it, it, it does show that there's, there's a lot more value in this. So, uh, so, what, so what, do you, what, do you, what do you give as evaluation? Where do you see, see it? Where do you see it going? What's the what forecast do you have? I, I I see the value of this at thirty seven point seven p. That's that's the number that comes out of my model, um, and I don't think there's anything crazy in that valuation. It's quite a lot higher than the share price now, which is what nine to nine and a half. Eight and a half. Um, so there's so I see a lot of upside in it. Okay, they were hopeful that. Rio Tinto might come in and you know snap up the company, and Rio Tinto are dragging their feet. They they still yet to run the smelter test in Canada, uh, and I think that's because they've just been too busy. They they had a, a bit of an interruption with COVID nineteen um, last year, and they've been and but as a result of COVID, a lot of people bought paint and started painting their houses, and that's where most of the ilmenite comes in. And there's huge amount of construction going on in the world right now and the companies that that convert the uh, what's called titanium dioxide into pigments for paints they've been going these guys are going flat out so 
There's huge demand in the world for ilmenite, and this is why the price has been rising steadily over the last six months, and why the price has jumped in China. And I think what seems to what seems to happen in China tends to lead the rest of the world these days. So it it, it, it all looks good to me. Okay, cool. So that's what. Uh, so it was four times where you currently see the price at the moment. You reckon that's where it should be? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, and, I, and I'm, you know, I'm, I, I, I'm sticking with it because I've, I've, I've double checked it, and I think that's where I think, I think that's where it deserves to be valued. Okay, well, stuff. Stick with it, John. Don't move. Yeah. So, do you know what? I, I see that a lot. I mean, there's a bit of a sell-off in the market yesterday on certain stocks, and um, you know, people start questioning their, um, their, you know, their research and all that stuff. And sometimes, you know, fear is your friend. And I keep saying this sometimes. Uh, if you've gone back to literally, you know, the, the dash for cash uh, crash back in March, you could have bought anything back then and you've done very well, you know. And so sometimes when the market is really bearish, but you know there's value down the road there. If this company you're, you've researched and all that, stick to it, hold it to even top up on these big sell-off days. It's worth it, isn't it? And uh, it's just having conviction, isn't it, really? It's true. And what, what I should add is my assumptions on... Uh, the Dundas project for Blue Jay include an increase in the production rate, which is something that we would normally expect to see off off any mining project that is that is economic and and where prices are rising. Mm. Um, and we also we also make this grandiose assumption that the that the resource will carry on for many more years than than has currently been defined. But then having having walked and driven across the beaches of Greenland where the where the Ilmanite sits, it seems pretty straightforward and obvious to me that, that this resource is going to carry on for fifty, maybe a hundred years. Mm. Yeah, 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 cool. Marvellous stuff. Um, did you say fifty to a hundred years then? Yeah? Ab- absolutely, yeah. this, they've they've got about thirty miles of of peaches along there, mm. and and it carries on. And some of it is looks to me to be much higher grade than the than the resource that's currently being calculated. Now, look, it's far be it from me to go against the consultants that have uh, defined the actual numbers, but we know these guys tend to be a bit on the cautious yeah. side of things. And there's one area where they were drilling where they actually broke the drill because the 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 ground that they were drilling into, or the, shall we say, the ilmenite uh, sand, was so dense that they, the, the the machine couldn't cope with it. So there's no more drilling because replacing that machine is quite expensive. Oh. It's a special type of drill yeah, yeah. for drilling into this this heavy mineral sand. Um, having broken that machine, they you know they they haven't rushed to to ship another one in but they don't need to I mean they've, they've got enough to get the project going yeah 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 okay uh, uh, right I'm going to put you on the spot here John someone said can you talk about Alba Minerals I don't know if you know much about those do you know much about that I've, I've had George yeah, in the podcast well, lots of times but um, do you know much about well, I first, first got to know about Alba because they own uh, Mineral Sands Tenements just just along from from Blue Jay at Dundas in Greenland mm. and that's quite interesting I mean the well, we're not sure that they're quite the same quality, but you know what? If if you own, if if somebody comes along and buys Blue Jay, the chances are they'll look at maybe consolidating and buying Alba as well. Mm. I heard the story that Alba had also staked a claim across the American airbase at Thule, which um, I think hadn't impressed the Americans. The concept of somebody coming along and digging up their runway uh, for what for their for their very strategic airbase. Yeah. Wouldn't, wouldn't go down terribly well, mm. um, but I'm quite sure that would never happen anyway. And I'm quite sure Alba wouldn't wouldn't do that. But there's lots and lots of uh, beach sands for miles uh, in either direction, so I don't think that's a particular problem. And I see Alba are planning on sp- spinning that off into a new IPO, which is a pretty sensible idea as far as I can see. And Alba have got a bunch of other assets, including the old Clogow gold mine in Wales. Um, yeah. Which I think is which I think is a nice asset. I mean, it hasn't come up with great uh, gold grades yet, but it, it's definitely something that's worth exploring because the, the, there there is gold in Wales, and there's more value to be had out of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, George seems to be um, majoring in that at the moment, doing lots of work there, and every, every time he's come on the podcast, that's what he's been talking about. So, uh, yeah, Welsh gold, see, it's the best in the world. Well, the thing is, they, you know, they've they've got a decent team in place at Alba. They've got a sensible set of non-executive directors to keep an eye on things, and they've got they've got people in the right jobs doing the right things and represented on the board. So, that's I, th- I think that's important. Mm-hmm. Marvelous stuff. Um, oh, you want to mention Eurasia Mining or something there? 
Yes, we're, we're definitely worth mentioning. They are now, they've exited what's called the formal process, sales process. So we're able to say a little bit more than we were able to say a, a, mm. a, a couple of weeks ago. Um, and they've they've just issued some some new shares in in the US, uh, twenty million dollars worth of new stock to a, a major institution, uh, which is as yet unnamed. Um, but uh, and and they also talk a little bit about the joint venture that they have with uh, Rosgeo, which is a rough Russian government organisation which holds a lot of mineral licences. They've got a seventy five percent interest in that uh and it means that they it, it gives it, it just gives them access to more platinum group metals projects uh this time up in the kola peninsula um they've already got a lot of pgms in in russia they have the montachindra hydro project which uh which they already have a, a, a bit of a deal on um so there's lots going on there and They've got they've got interest in the in the in the portfolio. So what we expect to see here is somebody coming in to do a deal on potential either acquiring or joint venturing a lot of the assets within that portfolio. I suspect that will result in a um, a cash payment and a, and a, a massive dividend to the investors. Not sure I should use the word massive, but I would expect it to be pretty large. Um, otherwise, I don't think they would do the deal because they're in a they're in a pretty good place with platinum and palladium prices at very very high levels. Um, yeah, I think they, they you know there's there's value in there, and they they should be able to turn those projects into well certainly work with some other people to to create value from those projects. Mm, yeah, more of the stuff. So what's the what's the market cap there of Eurasia? I mean, because I, I see it's very popular, and I see people think you know be very bullish on it. And the market cap is what uh, over seven hundred million. Market, it's market caps close to seven hundred and fifty million pounds. My personal view is the 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 assets uh, in the ground have considerably more value than this. Uh, and I, yes, I think in in the environment that we're in, um, somebody will come along and do a deal here that that should be significantly value accretive. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, uh, marvelous stuff. John, anything else we want to talk about? Anything else we want to chat about? Any companies? Any macro? Uh, I think it's worth having a, a, a mentioning Anglo Asian mining. Very good operating results. Operating costs down at seven hundred dollars an ounce. Gold prices rising. Uh, stable production. Uh, no bank debt. Forty million dollars in cash. They're paying a special dividend. The yield on Anglo Asian mining is five and a half percent at the moment. That's probably one of the highest yields in the market. So, uh, well-run business. Um, quite a loss, you know. Actually, for a company that suffered um, on its future resources, it's actually got quite a lot of new prospects in the bag at the moment. And that's, I think, that's a very good thing for Anglo. So, in a much better position than it's been in for many, many years. And I think a stock price that will continue to perform. Mm-hmm. Marvellous stuff, John. Thanks for that, fella. And uh, we'll speak to you next week. Thank you. Okay, it's time for the top five most followed companies on Vox Markets in the last 24 hours. They are at five. Argo Blockchain on the bounce there. Because, of course, Bitcoin had a big sell off, but it's, uh, it's bounced a bit. Well, it's bounced, uh, I think, well, another 30,000, pretty much close to. Um, where is it now? Let's check out, let's check out the Bitcoin. But um, that's bouncing today. But I think it's still under the 200 moving average, I think, if I'm correct. I will look at this quickly. Bear with me, caller. Bear with me. Um, scrolling down. There we are. Bitcoin is now at just yet, just over a tad over 40,000. In fact, it's just over 40,000. And the uh, the moving 200 moving average is at well, slap bang on 40,000 there. Um, okay. So that's uh, Arca Blockchain. Got carried away there. Shield Therapeutics at four. Is up 4.6% to 55, 54.5. Um, mobile screens up 5% to 0.275. Velocity Composites down 2% to 22.5. And at 1, MySelix, or MySelix Technology Corporation, MYX, a non mover at 65. Okay, it's time for the top five most read RNSs uh, on the podcast, on the, on the platform. Let's have a look at them. They are at 5, Hurricane Energy. Confirmation of details of con- the convening hearing. At four, Albumin Resources, Final Results and Greenland Spinout IPO. At three, Escape Hunt, 
Holdings in Company. At two, N4 Pharma Operations Update. And at one, Eurasia Mining, private placement of US 20 million for Rosgo JV. That's it for the podcast. Thanks for listening. Machos appreciato. The Vox Markets Podcast with Justin Waite. Nothing in this podcast is intended as investment advice and the people in this podcast may hold positions in the stocks they talk about. Do not buy anything based solely on a tip or recommendation. Please do your own research.